Hello, my name is Eric James and I'm the Chief Investigator with the Arkansas Department of Education for the Professional Licensure Standards Board. I'm here to talk about something very important to the ADE, the PLSB, Arkansas School Districts and Communities Around Our State, the Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators. The Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators defines the minimum standards for professional ethical conduct for all educators. The Arkansas Department of Education's rules governing the Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators define these standards and provide a process to investigate alleged violations. Why are the Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators important? As everyone ponders this very important question, let's hear from some of our colleagues from around the state. The Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators allows us to define professional behavior. It also serves as a guide for ethical conduct. In today's world, where we all have our own freedoms, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, it sets the standard for what it means to be an ethical educator in, in the classroom. We have to be careful about what it is that we allow our students to be exposed to. So the Arkansas, the Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators allows a safety net of protection for our students. We have to keep them safe, not only physically in the classroom, but we have to keep them safe mentally and socially and psychologically so that ultimately they can grow and learn and become the lifelong productive citizens that we are expecting and hoping that they will become. As educators, our first priority is to keep kids safe. And so not only is it important to our profession to uphold our integrity as educators, but also to keep our kids safe day in and day out in our classrooms and you know outside of the classroom, wherever they are, under educators' care. It's important that we have a, um, a standard to live by and um, to um, know what it's important to um, do as far as taking care of our kids. We have to use the Code of Ethics as a tool as I use the Ten Commandments. You have to use that to understand what our purpose is, what we're supposed to do as educators and coaches, and be able to work within that realm and not use it as something to make as a set of rules to punish somebody, but make it a set of rules to live by. The Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators is important because the professional ethical educator contributes to the development and maintenance of a supportive, student-focused learning environment that values and promotes the nurturing of students, human dignity, fairness, and individual rights. These standards are vital for maintaining the public's respect and support for all educators. Arkansas law mandates that every person with a valid Arkansas teaching license issued by the State Board of Education is required to abide by the Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators. An ethical teacher is one who, um, at all costs, protects their kids and their students and maintains professionalism and integrity and honesty, um, looking at all aspects, whether it's um, taking care of kids, to their paperwork, to interacting with their colleagues. It's one who is always mindful of their presence and their interactions with students, parents, families, community as a whole. To describe an ethical teacher, uh, I would probably first understand that there's, there's one important factor, you've got to go below that. Ethics is decisions. Uh, to be an ethical person, you have to be a good decision maker. Uh, and we go through, you've heard the terms, we'll go through 30,000 decisions a day. Uh, where do I stand? What do I say? What do I do? Uh, and understanding that each one of those decisions has consequences uh, in everything you do. So to, to be an effective uh, person to do that, you have to have a strong background and understand right and wrong. Uh, and being able to make decisions that are sometimes are not going to be good for everybody. Uh, but to make sure you make a decision that is fair, is consistent, and that the principles are upheld of what we're trying to achieve, which is the ethics and our code as teachers, but just as a person in general, to try and make sure we take care for the well-being of all of our kids. Now that we've discussed why ethics are important to maintain your professionalism, the next segment will discuss and examine the eight standards of the Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators. Standard one, an educator maintains a professional relationship with each student, both in and outside the classroom. 
Some examples of violations of Standard 1 include cursing or cussing in the classroom, physically grabbing a student for disciplinary purposes or in an angered state of mind, having inappropriate communication with a student including exchanging letters or emails, engaging in sexualized dialogue, making suggestive comments or sexual contact, embarrassing or bullying a student, having a student over at your home that serves no educational purpose, inappropriate use of social media, sending inappropriate images to a student, posting personal images to your school page that contain no educational purpose, and posting during educational time. Oftentimes I tell the pre-service teachers uh, that I work with, first things first, first gain an understanding. Gain an understanding of who you are. What are your thoughts? What are your beliefs? What are your philosophies? What are your theories? And then I tell them to gain an understanding of their students, where they come from, who are they? What, uh, what types of diversity are they bringing to your classroom? Get to know your students because that way you can build, with that understanding, you can build relationships with your students. And in order to build positive and professional relationships with students, you have to know who you are. I think the other part of that is that when you commit to becoming an educator, when you are a pre-service teacher, when you are a seasoned teacher of 30 years, you made the choice to accept the calling to teach. And when you made that choice, you accepted the call to be committed to our students, to commit it to the students of Arkansas and to the nation and to the world. So you have to be 100% committed to our students and, and their growth. In, a, in essence, you have to show up. In essence, you have to be the person that can serve as that role model um, for them. You have to do that on purpose every day because they deserve that every single day. You, it's, it, it's best for you as a new teacher or even as a seasoned teacher who's been at this for maybe 30 years to take a step back and to reestablish your routines and your policies and your procedures for the classroom because it then sets the ability, it sets the tone for the classroom to have a positive working environment, a positive classroom environment. It has high expectations. I happen to be a deacon in my church, so I don't condone it. Uh, I do know with, with the, the arena of sports, and it is highly charged, it's highly emotional, uh, people do get emotional and they lose track of uh, maybe things they say. Uh, and I've had even kids that uh, my own players will say a curse word, and in all honesty, they won't even remember they said it. And I'll assure them, yeah, that's exactly what you said, and we'll go about our consequences after that. But uh, coaching-wise, I don't think there should be an excuse for it. Uh, I think we must maintain a, a high level of integrity. I think we must be able to handle all of our situations and not take it personal. Uh, that's, that's one thing, uh, cursing comes from anger. Uh, that's, that's the only thing that is going to enter into your thinking that will create a curse word is you're angry. We've got to be able to control our anger and understand that this is not something personal. Whatever the problem was, it's something that has to be correctable. It's something we must, as coaches, be able to be the bigger person, settle that person down, and work through the problem, not by cussing. Uh, cursing just creates more problems. Uh, like I tell my coaches, and I tell anybody that's involved, and you can ask them, don't say anything to a young man that you wouldn't want said to his pastor, his mom, his dad, and his grandma. Uh, because in today's time, unfortunately, a large part of my kids have grandmothers raising them. So with that thought in mind, it's kind of you speak to them as you would speak to another adult. Uh, and if that becomes a problem and they still can't maintain that level, uh, most of the time they won't be around very long. Uh, but it does happen. Uh, and when it does, it, it should be addressed. If it happens too much, uh, then you go through appropriate channels to make sure that person is reprimanded to the point of termination if it gets too bad. A lot of times, teachers struggle with disciplining students. They become frustrated, things of that sort. But if you take the time to get to know your students, if you take the time to establish the culture in your classroom, then learning how to discipline and to motivate your students will be beneficial for all. 
It keeps you from making knee-jerk reactions. It keeps you from uh, becoming frustrated quickly. It allows you the opportunity to take a step back and to think and to, uh, to establish what's going to be the best route for our students. And when you don't know, ask. Coaches are probably uh, more so uh, than I would say as than teachers because we have, not that it's a different relationship to the respect that we don't communicate with our children, but it's in a different arena. Um, a good friend of mine and I spoke with that on the way over here and it's, it's a situation where we are in a, an environment that's going to be highly charged. There's going to be an extreme uh, more amount of emotion. Uh, and when you have those situations with coaches and players, it makes a slightly different uh, relationship. You're going to be closer. Uh, I'm closer to my quarterback, so to speak, than that geometry teacher may be to the student sitting in the middle row towards the back. Uh, because we spend so much time together. I spend, uh, I'm blessed to have a son that's finally to the age where he's been one of my student or one of my players. Um, I finally got to spend time with him because up until the point that he got to me, I didn't see him until I got home. And that's one thing, when you spend that much time with these young men and women across the state, you forge relationships that will last forever. And with that being understood, it's not the same. And our relationship is, is much deeper. And with that comes responsibility because there are the times that those relationships as a young person, and they do, they make mistakes and coaches make mistakes, they may take something wrong. They may think something you said was a certain way when that's not the way you intended it. Standard two, an educator maintains competence regarding his or her professional practice inclusive of skills, knowledge, dispositions, and responsibilities relating to his or her organizational position. Some examples of standard two violations include not following a student's IEP or 504 plan, striking a fellow educator or a student, forging of educational documents, allowing inappropriate pictures to be posted on school websites, not following test administration guidelines, refusing to meet requirements of job, failing to properly supervise by leaving students unattended, failing to notify parents of student injury. So we have to be careful to make sure that we are showing them how to interact and how to grow and how to learn and how to disagree and how to have fun and how to take the differences that we have from each other and respect those differences and learn from those differences. We just have to do everything that it takes 100% of the time for our students because they deserve all of that. Standard three. An educator honestly fulfills reporting obligations associated with professional practices. Some examples of standard three violations include failing to make required report to the child abuse hotline upon learning of suspected child abuse or sexual abuse, reporting false data to the Arkansas Department of Education, Bureau of Legislative Audit, State Board of Education and other state and federal government agencies reporting false grades, reporting false student achievement in order to receive scholarship and or academic awards, giving false information to recommend an individual for employment or promotion or licensure, as well as when reporting professional qualifications, criminal history, college credit and degree, awards or employment history. If you need to report child maltreatment, please call the Child Abuse Hotline at 1-800-482-5964. Standard 4. An educator entrusted with public funds and property, including school-sponsored activity funds, honors that trust with honest, responsible stewardship. Some examples of Standard 4 violations include using school-issued computers to download pornography, using school-issued computers to run your personal business, using school-issued computers to update your Facebook or other social media site during teaching time, 
using school-issued computers to send explicit emails or images to significant others. You may not use school equipment, such as vehicles, for personal gain. Stealing concession stand money. Standard 5. An educator maintains integrity regarding the acceptance of any gratuity, gift, compensation, or favor that might impair or appear to influence professional decisions or actions and shall refrain from using the educator's position for personal gain. Some examples of Standard 5 violations include concert and sport tickets, receiving alcohol or drugs from students, receiving gift cards in extreme amounts, allowing parents to perform free lawn care or home repair. Standard 6. An educator keeps in confidence secure standardized test materials and results and maintains integrity regarding test administration procedures. All testing security training thoroughly discusses what is not permitted while administering a test. Standard 7. An educator maintains the confidentiality of information about students and colleagues obtained in the course of the educator's professional services that is protected under state law or regulations, federal law or regulations, or the written policies of the educator's school district, unless disclosure serves a professional purpose as allowed or required by law or regulations. Some examples of Standard 7 violations include sharing FERPA information that does not serve an educational purpose, speaking about medication students may be taking, Standard 8. An educator refrains from using, possessing, and or being under the influence of alcohol or unauthorized drugs, substances, and or possessing items prohibited by law, or possessing or using tobacco or tobacco-related products while on school premises or at school-sponsored activities involving students. Some examples of Standard 8 violations include under the influence or in possession of drugs or alcohol at school or school-sponsored events, taking pills or being in possession or under the influence of pills not prescribed to you, taking student medication, huffing paint, sniffing glue, being under the influence of illegal narcotics, bringing a gun into the classroom. Now that everyone's had a chance to listen and review the eight standards, I hope this information will reinforce all of your commitment to professionalism and most of all, our students. Parents, your school district, and your communities hold you, teachers, to a higher standard. With this prodigious responsibility comes your eight standards. When you have people's children in your care, they have certain expectations and these eight standards provide the ethical compass to navigate through the ethical decisions you make each and every day. Increasingly, educators are utilizing social networking technology tools for professional educational purposes. The Professional Licensure Standards Board offers the cautionary guidelines to assist educators in ensuring that their usage of these tools is consistent with the spirit and intent of the Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators. So as superintendent or district leaders or even building leaders working in your district to train, whether it be new teachers or just annually training your teachers, um, I think it's important as social media has expanded and becoming such a daily part of our lives, um, the newer, younger staff that you're employing, sometimes um, it's, a, it's a daily thing for them. It's, they don't think about the technologies um, that they're using and when they start you know, teaching and they step into those classrooms and they're engaging with kids, it's very easy to jump into communicating with them on a platform that's not always appropriate, it's not professional. And so again, as a code of ethics, we need to remember that social media can, can hurt children and we have to, to look and use it not only effectively and educationally, but we have to be careful not to step over those lines that we, we are so careful to keep. So, um, you know, as a district leader or building leader, as you're doing your trainings, there are do's and don'ts. Um, I always talk to my staff about don't text. 
Um, there are many apps and technologies out there that you can use. Um, Remind 101, there are several that you can use so that they're not engaging in two, two way communication with kids. It's portals that allow for good, safe communications. Um, whether it's that you're teaching good use of the internet, whether you're talking about Instagram and cyberbullying and those things, those are all avenues of trainings that I think district and building leaders have to utilize and teachers in the classroom. Every day they encounter students who are engaging in technology and they can keep them safe simply by keeping those lines um, drawn and also by teaching safe communication using technology. Not that technology is a bad thing, but we have to teach that it's safe and not safe and as educators and professionals we have to um, we have to be the ones that teach that and make sure that we're not crossing those lines. Anyone can fill out an allegation of violation form. Allegations are filed under penalty of perjury. All allegations must be mailed to the address listed on the form with an original signature. Penalties and fines may include a letter of caution, written warning, written reprimand accompanied with a fine, probation accompanied with a fine, suspension accompanied with a fine, or revocation accompanied with a fine. With the exception of a letter of caution and a written warning, all recommendations by the Ethics Subcommittee can be accompanied with a fine and any training with all costs being paid by the educator. Please visit the PLSB page on the Arkansas Department of Education's website for updates on the Code of Ethics rules and fines. In the 2016-17 school year, the Professional Licensure Standards Board, or PLSB, received 238 allegation forms, which led to 165 investigations. A majority of the investigations involved violations of standards one and two of the Code of Ethics for Arkansas educators. More than half of those cases involved female educators. PLSB also investigated 25 cases involving bullying of students by educators. Of those cases, 12 involved coaches 
and 10 involve classroom educators. Also during the 2016-17 school year, PLSB investigated 30 cases concerning inappropriate use of social media with students. 14 of those cases involved classroom educators and 12 cases involved coaches. Additionally, PLSB investigated 29 cases concerning inappropriate sexual dialogue, intent, grooming, or sexual contact with a student. Of those cases, 11 involved classroom educators, 11 involved coaches, all of whom were male, three involved administrators, and four involved fine arts educators. Um, we do a new teacher training every year and we use these uh, code of ethics. Um, we do training with them every year. Um, but ongoing during the year, whenever scenarios present themselves, we um, go back to those ethics, those code of ethics, and we read them and we talk about them and we talk about how they um, interact with each other. We read um, findings, we read cases, unfortunately, that have happened to professionals in our state. But we analyze those and we talk about how they could be prevented, uh, the do's and don'ts for those. And as a superintendent, I like to use those with our personnel to talk about. Um, even though you think it might be okay, this is how it might not be. And this is how um, we need to be very mindful of those things and how they interact um, on a daily basis. While you might think it's okay, or your colleague might think it's okay. But I also think as a tool, I think it's important that we work together as professionals to call each other out when it's not okay that things are happening. Um, because a lot of things can be prevented, I think, on a daily basis. If more superintendents and more leaders, more building leaders, more teacher leaders take the initiative to promote our profession and take care of kids, and it comes through use of the the code of ethics. Uh, because our job is very important. Uh, what we do as educators and administrators is mold the lives of young people that are very moldable. Uh, and in that situation, that's, that's something we should all take to heart and it's something we should all understand. It is a very important job to do. And it's difficult sometimes, uh, but it's something for the betterment of our children that we're bringing up to try and teach them right and wrong. Uh, it's something we have to do to be an example. The Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators serves as a guide for ethical conduct. It lets the rest of the world know that we are indeed a profession. We have to have the foundation of the Code of Ethics so that we can be the best possible teacher for our students because they deserve it. Every day, they deserve it. We hope this video has helped provide you with a deeper understanding of the Arkansas Code of Ethics for Arkansas Educators. Please remember that the Code of Ethics are standards to live by and not policies to go by. The entire Arkansas Department of Education's PLSB staff is committed to providing support to Arkansas educators. Feel free to contact us by phone or email with any questions you may have. Our efforts are focused on ensuring the professionalism of all Arkansas educators and ensuring the safety of all students.